Hi all, this is another interesting game by Cavalier Fu. Uh, so this is Leela ID 495 against Laser 1.5. The time control 5 minutes each 10 second increments, I believe. E4 from Leela 0, 495. So Laser plays Sicilian Defense here. We go into the Sicilian Defense Sveshnikov variation. Of the Knight B5, D6, Bishop F4, E5, Bishop G5. A6, knight, A3. So this is one of my favorites. When I was much younger, I, I used to be a real fan of the Sicilian Sveshnikov. There's two main moves here, bishop takes or knight, D5. In this game, Leela chooses knight, D5. We have bishop, E7. Bishop takes, bishop takes. So this is a more positional continuation than the other one. Black doesn't get doubled pawns. White tries to secure that D5 square more now this maneuver is pretty standard knight c2 to e3 sometimes okay so here black castles knight c2 bishop g5 and now leela plays what is kind of a trendy move i remember uh in informal to this move very trendy it's been used by kasparov i believe it's a little trap as well which is well known well it's very simple to calculate if takes then that's a disaster queen h5 on h7 not after so mating um or winning the bishop if <laughs> that's radical but g3 just wins the bishop so it's well known can't take that so it's gaining space a tempo g4 and i've played this against uh believe it or not uh iccf uh honorary president alan borwell once on my own site chessbold.net and he played a similar idea here to laser trying to sacrifice a pawn and he did so successfully so he got a fantastically dynamic game. So black uh, is trying to sacrifice the pawn to open up some dark squares, and like the e file, for example, and the e5 square could be very important. So this is a this is actually quite dangerous for white. I mean, black's hand was kind of forced there because g5 looks very unpleasant anyway. Uh, if g6, then it looks as though white's gaining space with g5 and it's got h5 as a prospect, etc. So this is black trying to play very dynamically here. Queen f3. And we see bishop b7. So should white go for a winning winning the pawn? Well, Leela did actually play knight takes f4. Now black didn't straightforwardly recapture because here actually white might be quite uh, doing quite well, not committed to castling yet. So castling queenside is on d6 might actually be okay, a small edge for white. But black played the trickier pin of the knight against the queen. And we have now knight e3. So the other knight is trying to come to the rescue here. And now even more tension, keeping the pen, knight e7, creating a new pen on the e4 pawn. Uh, so this is getting very, very interesting. Here, if queen takes f4, then bishop g2 would seem white as a small edge there. And if e takes f4, then this position uh, should be it looks it looks scary with the king in the center, but this might be about equal. This it looks even position here, so it is a pretty tense position. So knight e7, we have knight e d5, bishop takes, and now again white's white's being tricky now. Instead of just capturing on d5 immediately with a pawn, g5 was played. Now, there's a reason why that's useful to be trickier here rather than straightforward. The straightforward e takes actually runs into knight g6. And this position with black having a knight on f4 is very pleasant for black. Black has a big advantage here. So both sides very tricky, finessed moves, as you'd expect from top level engines. We have actually uh, the move g5 instead. And again, another tricky move. Instead of queen takes f4, which would give white a small edge in this continuation, because it's too dangerous for black to take there, white can get an, a nice advantage there in that line. Black actually plays queen f5 using that pin on f3. Very tense tactics here in this game. We have bishop g2 now. If e takes f5 this is clearly better for black picking up f5 it's a big advantage for black so bishop g2 queen takes f4 
queen takes. Oh, we have a calmer position. Knight g6, king d2, but now a tactical move again, f3. And actually, Lila avoids taking on f3 because she actually plays bishop f1. If bishop takes f3, there's f6 here, embarrassing the bishop, in fact. A strong tactical pressure, black should at least be equal here. So that's avoided actually. F3 is a, um, it's not a, let's go back. After F3, we have Bishop F1. Now, Rook A E8. And this is a key move quite often in the Sicilian Sveshnikov to try and attack Black's pawn structure here. Black counterattacks against D5, C4 supporting D5, B takes, Rook takes. And now laser plays rook b8 here, offering the a6 pawn. This a6 pawn is actually taken, so white's actually got a potentially dangerous outside pass pawn now. Rook takes king c3, and rook takes f2. So what's going on here? Is this a pawn really worth it, giving up f2 there? So black is a pawn up, technically. But white has this potentially dangerous outside past pawn, rook hb1. Black is now two pawns up. What is going on? Is Leela falling to bits? In fact, this is a decisive mistake, rook takes d5. Not seeing further enough into the future. Black has to play, it seems, here, either f5 or f6. For example, f5 takes knight f4 this is an example line where black could equalize if a5 that's losing the exchange and black's winning there uh, and this this situation basically white would have to uh, repeat the position king c3 and re re repetition draw so that's one way for black to activate and get a repetition draw with move f5 however uh, also, f6 is it seems possible as well. And there's all sorts of if black can get enough activity, uh, can be very resourceful here against white's a pawn. But this is very, very resourceful stuff to handle the a pawn in the game. It was inadequate to handle the a pawn. This rook takes d5 because now check. Pinning the knight, dragging the knight back. Bishop c4 hitting the rook. But going into a self in, you might think, well, d5 is a big deal. Guess what Leela plays here? Absolutely winning move. And it's becoming a recurring theme for breaking down brute force chess engines. Okay. a5. Leela's saying, I'm going to queen the pawn. d5. a6. Rook takes c4 check, king d3. What's stopping this pawn? Queening. Rook f1, trying to deflect an entire, uh, a rook, losing the exchange. That's taken. The rook gets behind the pawn, the tarish roll. Rook c1, threatening. Rook c8 to win the knight. f2, the king comes back for this pawn. And now it's just, it's just absolutely winning. It's just a rook up for white. Yeah, the A pawn was just totally underestimated in this game, in that sequence. Black had to play f6 or f5, it seems, instead of rook d5. So it shows Leela once again, she can put tactics in context, basically. There might be these tactical transactions during a game, and you might think it's great tactical ability to see those, but actually it's even greater magnificent magnificent to see the tactics in the wider bigger picture of the past pawns we see that with king side attacks with past pawn potential we saw it here that past pawn potential massively exploited by leela brute force engines distracted by short-term tactical sequences not understanding the longer-term dangers of the possession well at this time control anyway but there's still that horizon effect of incremental depth search of brute force chess engines uh, whatever happens so interesting stuff comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much